B.F. Skinner's Operant Conditioning Chamber experiments produced valuable data for the study of animal and human psychology. To understand the scientific and cultural significance of Skinner's invention, we must look at the roots of behaviorism. Two key scientific figures played a significant role in the development of Skinner's theory. Ivan Pavlov, a Russian physiologist who created the concept of classical conditioning, has been hailed as Skinner's greatest source of influence. In a series of famous trials in the late 1890s, Pavlov measured the salivary responses of dogs. Pavlov would associate food delivery in deprived dogs with a stimulus such as a metronome. Seen here, he discovered that eventually, Without the presence of food, the dog still salivated in response to the stimulus, which Pavlov dubbed a conditioned response. Through this discovery, Pavlov is credited with developing the field of classical conditioning, a revolutionary concept that provided the experimental foundation for Skinner's later studies. It was John B. Watson, an American psychologist at the University of Chicago, who first conceived of behaviorism in a 1913 article titled Psychology as the Behaviorist Views It. In the paper, he put forth, The behavior of animals can be investigated without appeal to consciousness. This was a theory that would later shape Skinner's approach to animal behavior. Watson is also noted for conducting a series of studies dubbed the Little Albert Experiments, wherein he tested his theory of conditioning on children. Skinner, inspired by Pavlov and Watson, set out to further investigate the field of behaviorism. B.F. Skinner graduated from Hamilton College and joined the psychology department at Harvard in 1928 at the age of 24. He attained his Ph.D. in 1931. Skinner was initially skeptical about his enthusiasm for psychology at Harvard, stating that, I'm rather certain that I shall have interest enough to do something in this field, although I project myself into the future only for two or three years. However, while at Harvard, Skinner developed the operant conditioning chamber, the object seen here that would become his most significant invention. Operant conditioning is a concept which states that if an action is followed by the delivery of a reinforcer, the compulsion to perform the initial action will be eventually stronger. In order to substantiate this hypothesis, Skinner constructed this box which housed a pigeon that was given a desired response input mechanism. Here we see a pecking disc that was used as a way to elicit a behavior from the animal. After the pigeon pecked a certain amount of times, it would be given a reward, in this instance, food. By the end of the trial, Skinner was able to train the pigeon to peck repeatedly at the disc in anticipation of the reward. In addition to this invention, Skinner also created a recording device that was able to measure accurately the rate of pecking, thus giving him thousands of precise data points. His statistical rigor set a standard for future psychological experiments. Skinner's operant conditioning trials defined the study of behaviorism. In a 1957 publication with C.B. Furster titled Schedules of Reinforcement, Skinner indicated that a stimulus appears to be connected of necessity with a definite response, as cause with effect. In this, he means that presenting a subject with some sort of trigger will inevitably result in an associated action which can be reinforced over time. He concluded that there exists three types of reinforcement ratios, a fixed interval, fixed ratio, and variable interval. The fixed interval occurs when, after a certain time, a behavior is rewarded. A fixed ratio makes the reinforcer available after a certain number of responses. Variable ratio occurs after different times and amounts of responses. These reinforcement schedules serve as a key foundation of behaviorism as they describe the way that subjects normally respond to stimuli in experimental conditions. Ultimately, Skinner's operant conditioning theory evolved into the school of radical behaviorism, a concept which proposed that all human behavior is in fact predetermined and does not come from free will. Many scientists in this school utilized Skinner's method of reinforcement classification. One example is Richard Herrnstein, who classified reward behavior in a series of Skinner-inspired numerical trials. In 1962, David Premack extended Skinner's analysis to higher and lower probability responses based on the presence of different reinforcers. In Albert Bandura's 1960s experiments on the social behavior of children, 
the work of Skinner also held great significance. Bandura used the concept of reinforcement to explain aggressive behavior in children. Essentially, Skinner's work became the starting point for several pivotal studies on human behavior. Behaviorism is a foundation of modern psychoanalysis. Therapists often seek to identify underlying motivators or reinforcers for a patient's action, which may be out of his or her control. Skinner's investigations are also significant because they can be used to explain day-to-day -day behavior. For instance, when a school teacher rewards a student who does well with a golden star, she attempts to reinforce the good exhibited behavior. Similar to the pigeons who are trained to perform an action due to some end delivery, the child's self-esteem is boosted by the gold star, therefore, hopefully, leading to a repeated occurrence. Another way to apply Skinner's studies is in the realm of gambling. Particularly with slot machines, humans are rewarded with values of coins and are therefore encouraged to continue playing the game. The reward, which comes after a variable ratio of slot machine spins, ultimately becomes a reinforcer for the player, thereby leading to an addictive type of behavior. B.F. Skinner's Operant Conditioning Chamber is a way to understand the change and persistence in the study of human behavior. As we have seen, Skinner's theory was built upon the works of Pavlov and Watson. The underlying concept of behavior being out of one's free will is an idea that has persisted from Pavlov's to Skinner's experiments. The dog salivation and the bird's pecking are comparable in nature. However, Skinner's legacy has created room for changes in the understanding of operant conditioning. Scientists such as Bandura and Premack have defined new types of reinforcers, such as social elements. Ultimately, Skinner's operant conditioning chamber had great societal significance because his publications changed the way psychologists viewed behavior. Also, his work has contributed to our understanding of day-to-day -day phenomenon, both inside and outside the realm of science.